Hello everyone! For beginners and those who are just getting started with the machine, it's important to learn how to do manicure safely for yourself first and foremost. Many girls ask for advice on how to avoid injuries and mistakes when learning independently, and there's no one around to provide timely guidance. I've decided to gather useful tips for you, simple yet effective techniques that will help you safely perform a manicure for yourself considering that you're still a novice in this matter. Drawing from my own experience, I know the common pitfalls where beginners often make mistakes. Let's avoid them together. I'll talk about the correct selection and usage of bits, share some handy tips that will make the procedure as safe as possible. I'll demonstrate three convenient techniques for using a diamond bit for manicure, something that's rarely discussed but can greatly ease the task. Dry and wet techniques. In general, doing a manicure for yourself versus a client are quite different things. That's why we use combined techniques, which are the most convenient and high quality method for self-manicure. I understand that many are just getting into this craft. Some have bought a cheap machine, some have invested in higher quality tools and are taking their first steps without special education. And of course, you're experimenting on yourself first. The main challenge for beginners is that there's no mentor nearby who could notice mistakes and correct them in time. And mistakes are inevitable simply because you have little practice so far. But don't worry, in this video I'll try to provide you with as much useful information as possible so that you can avoid mistakes. I understand that you're probably watching a lot of instructional videos right now. Some of them are aimed at experienced professionals and not everything may be immediately clear to a novice. At the beginning is normal. I want to assure you almost everyone has overfiled at some point in their journey. It's absolutely normal. So self-taught learners, shall we start with removal? If you're a beginner, use the red bit. Red is soft, blue is medium, green is hard. These are the most common colors, although there are others, but don't focus on them right now. With the red bit, you can still overfile, but this bit has smaller teeth and it removes gel polish in thinner layers, in smaller, finer portions. You'll have more time and attempts to remove the gel polish thoughtfully, to notice in time when the nail is already being filed and it's time to stop. For beginners, I recommend getting something similar to what I have right now. It's the most convenient and safest option. The tip is thin enough to reach into the grooves, rounded enough not to overfile, and the body is voluminous enough to remove gel polish evenly. Let me tell you straight away, avoid sharp angles on the bits, such as truncated cones. We remove the gel polish, leaving a thin layer of base on the nail, meaning we don't file the coating down to the nail. If there is lifting, we remove it. I gently sweep away the edge of the gel polish that was once near the cuticle with soft, delicate movements. Then, I flip the hand to use the tip of the bit to remove any excess along the sidewall. But working the bit so close to the skin and natural nail is dangerous for beginners. Try doing this when you feel that the device handle sits confidently in your hand and you can easily control the bit. The removal process should be as smooth and even as if you were simply holding a regular pen and drawing lines on paper. But remember, we never press the bit. Instead, we rest it on the pinky finger and guide it almost weightlessly, smoothing out the nail. If you press the bit into the nail, the bit will dig into the coating, leaving a dent in the nail. So, let's say you couldn't clean the perimeter from the gel polish properly. No worries, grab a file. Most often, beginners struggle to remove gel polish smoothly. In any case, the nail surface still needs to be treated with a file. How do we remove the remnants of gel polish with a file? We work with the edge of the file, hold the file sideways and shift your hand from right to left or vice versa. I understand that the description might sound a bit unclear, but take the file and try it. It's easy. Simply brush off the gel polish with the edge of the file in smooth motions. It turns out that the file removes small patches with diagonal strokes before moving on to shaping, push back the cuticle. We push back the cuticle to ensure access of the bit and to open up access to cutting tools. Opening the cuticle directly with the bit often scratches or rubs the skin. 
unevenly exposes it and complicates further pushing back of the cuticle. This technique works well, but not on all hands. If you want a clean, safe manicure, open the cuticle with a manual tool, such as an orange wood stick or cuticle pusher. Now onto the shape and length. The index, middle and ring fingers should all be the same length while the pinky should be a couple of millimeters shorter and the thumb slightly longer. These are the length standards and it's good to aim for them. Of course, if you are creating very short nails, perhaps because you're a doctor, a massage therapist, or there are small children in your household, it's not necessary to measure each nail precisely. However, in any case, shaping begins with determining the length. The free edge is your starting point and it's convenient to file your own nails initially to ensure they are all even in length before shaping the free edge. For example, I uniformly round off all the corners. Attention beginners, nails have growth points which are the joints where the free edge of the nail meets the sidewalls. If you damage them, often done with a file, a gap or onycholysis can appear beneath the nail. This is a common problem in manicure, so we only file under the nail diagonally to avoid this. Shaping starts from the growth point. If you notice that, for example, the almond shape lacks smoothness, we still don't file the growth point. It means we made a mistake with the length somewhere, or we filed too much on the sides. But if you try to narrow down the living nail, nothing good will come of it. Next, we proceed with the surface filing. A smooth nail initially is the first step towards quality nail alignment during coating. But at this stage, we need to smooth out all the unevenness after using the drill and level the thickness of the gel polish on the nails. Always remove the dust constantly. Dust particles may be mistaken for areas needing filing, increasing the risk of filing off what shouldn't be. And to put it simply, we look to remove calloused skin, any flakes, cuticles or hangnails. In general, there shouldn't be any discomfort during a manicure. There's no need to dig nails out of the finger. It's just about refining the facade. Mine isn't the hairiest case here, it can get much worse. Now, about the drill, I want to provide a brief, concise answer to a whole block of beginner questions about drills. I already have a detailed video about drills with all the intricacies and nuances, but for now just a few recommendations. To start, I suggest using a red or blue one. If you have thick nails and rough skin, go for the flame drill with a diameter of about 1.8, 2.1 or 2.3 millimeters. I don't see the point in going larger or smaller. Speed. I recommend from 7 to 10,000 on a powerful device and you can go up to 15,000 if your device is weak. The higher the wattage, the more powerful the device. Low speed on a weak device will just make the drill slip. Also, on the screen, there's an image indicating the direction forward and reverse, which many often confuse. Forward, we work on the left side of the nail. With reverse, it's the right side. The drill should rotate with resistance. Also, I want to warn you, I don't know who called drills with blunt tips safe, but that's not the case. They are just as dangerous as sharp tips. But let me explain the logic behind it. Suppose we're trying to reach that bit of skin under the cuticle and filing away. Most beginners, that's what they do. They file, but it doesn't get cleared because the drill just can't reach. Typically, it goes like this. You look, file by feel, look again. No, the skin is still there. Need to file harder. And then it turns out the nail is being filed, but the beginner doesn't know, doesn't see, doesn't understand, and of course continues filing. This frame I captured specifically for you to make it clearer. The specificity of doing your own manicure is that it's not always possible to push back the skin, hold it, a third hand may be lacking, even for masters who have been practicing for many years. Well, some can do their own manicure and some can't. That's normal. In this video, I didn't cut the sidewalls with clippers because, first of all, I don't recommend them for those who do their own manicures. It's with them, most often, that the skin is horribly cut. Don't cut the sidewalls, they only grow back stronger from this. 
If you have rough seed walls, just file them. A little later, I'll show you how to use the drill if the nails are more overgrown. In such cases, you can add a keratolytic. It's sold in small bottles and you'll have plenty of it. I, for example, prefer alkaline, but there are also acid-based and urea-based ones. Apply it to the skin, wait a minute, Professional keratolytics act faster and better, so you should apply them not to all nails but one at a time, maximum two if you've achieved some minimal speed in manicure. If you have a cut near the cuticle or there may be hang nails, it will sting. In this case, do not use the keratolytic because it will cause even more irritation. Before covering the nails, wipe off the product from the nails. It's even better to wash your hands. Another common problem for beginners is overfiling in the sinus area. This removes too much and results in a hairy, rough cuticle, probably already within a day or two. It dries up because when filing, you're not just removing dead skin cells, but also live ones. It doesn't necessarily hurt or here on the softened skin. You can see that we should only cut what is transparent no more. Some people have thin cuticles, others have fleshy ones. In any case, do not exceed reasonable limits, do not cut more than necessary. Keep in mind that the skin will shrink when it dries and you won't see what you wanted to cut there anymore. But you might have cut too much and that's exactly how it happens. We tuck the lower blade under the cuticle. The cut goes perpendicular to the cuticle. We keep it at a straight 90 degree angle and we make an even cut in small steps. Scissors should be sharp because blunt scissors are another reason for awful cuticles. Now the diamond bit. How do beginners file sidewalls? They file the sidewalls hoping it will be as clean as on Instagram or YouTube. But in reality, it's a little different. This is the wrong approach. Let's break it down. The working part of the bit goes from the tip to the widening on the belly of the bit. Well, we also have the actual tip usually filed with the same tip or belly. We work the belly only on the skin and with the tip we help clean deeper, but the actual edge of the bit should not dig into the nail. Ideally, the tip should be just a little bit on the weight. We hardly work with it. You can use it to pick up something, but at the correct angle so that the working part of the bit runs parallel to the surface of the nail to avoid overfiling. We start by making the initial pass along the cuticle, gently removing anything visible without pushing the skin. Then we stretch the skin with our finger and look from the end. Once we've pushed back and see a piece of skin, we focus on it and file it. This is precisely the principle of working with a diamond bit, knowing exactly what you're filing. Now, regarding the technique, when filing along the cuticle, we either go straight or turn the bit with the tip against the direction, as if diagonally and both methods are okay. We proceed with short, even strokes along the cuticle, making sure not to linger in one spot. And when we approach the side walls, in each stroke, we change the angle so that the working part of the bit runs parallel to the skin, ensuring the tip gets into the gap between the nail and the cuticle. You shouldn't pass the side walls in one stroke. In that case, you either have extraordinary skill or you risk overfiling. Next, just like we cleaned the cuticle, we brush away any pterygium from the nail and then, rotating the bit, we move along the side wall. Avoid running the bit downward in one motion in this area, or else the belly of the bit will overfile. So, if you see a white stripe in the side wall that doesn't clean away, it's likely you've already overfiled there. Don't file there anymore, only work with the skin. For self-checking, first brush away the dust. Second, you can wipe the nails with a nail dehydrator. But be cautious with this, overfiling on the nail will feel hard and uneven to the touch. Working on the right side wall is exactly the same as the left, just in the opposite direction. Now, let's talk about pushing back the cuticle. Insert the tip under the cuticle, tilt the bit perpendicular to the nail, meaning the tip almost touches the nail, but doesn't actually touch it, and gently guide it with slight pressure on the skin. It's important not to touch the nail, because if the bit runs over the nail, it will leave a filing mark. 
dry cuticle trimming. We also noticed the junction between the dry white piece of skin and the area where it attaches to the skin. And it is along this line that we need to make the cut. We don't take off any more than necessary. Of course, it will be trimmed and there probably won't be any bleeding if a little extra is removed. But then, after three days, you will see hardened cuticles. Another common situation for beginners is when they see such a piece or maybe even more than one. Of course, there shouldn't be any and it's preferable to make clean cuts. But if it happened and there's some tiny piece sticking out, don't over trim it. Wash your hands, the skin is dry now. It will become slightly moist later. With oil cream in general, you won't see this piece. And if you're annoyed by every little detail, get yourself a silicone grinding bit and grind away to your heart's content. You won't wear away more than necessary on your own. But those tiny particles, this bit will remove. If we're talking about unclean sidewalls that you're afraid to file for, fear of filing off the nail, there's one life hack. It's not very professional for a nail technician, but it's quite applicable for a beginner or even for a master. If you haven't reached somewhere, if there's something left uncleaned, some tiny detail that you really need to remove for personal peace of mind, here's what you can do. Take the same keratolytic agent, drop it on the necessary spot, and after a minute, you can use an orange stick to remove all the excess from the sidewall. A stick is simply safer. After all, we're talking about safety today. Or you can use a cuticle pusher. The main challenge of doing your own manicure lies not only in lack of knowledge or skill, but also in the difficulty of positioning the fingers and stretching the skin properly. In general, the first two techniques are accessible even to a complete novice handling a nail drill for the first time. And the most important advice from this video is, it's better to underfile than to overfile. Additionally, girls often ask how to strengthen short nails, so I'll quickly demonstrate. First, we select a base. I use a flexible light base from Neil Apex, which is liquid and easy for me to work with. But you should choose a base you're confident in, as long as it's flexible and suitable for the type of nails you're working with. Strengthening short nails is always done in two stages. The first layer of gel we apply to the free edge and cure. The second layer we work as in a standard reinforcement, meaning we do the usual alignment with the hard material and cure it as well. The first layer of the coating plays a crucial role. It strengthens the free edge of the nail and gives it the necessary thickness to prevent bending and breaking during wear. After the gel is fully cured, it's important to remove the sticky layer. If needed, you can slightly adjust the shape of the nail. Then, we cover it with a top coat or colored coating. I hope this video helped you understand the basics of manicure and answered some of your questions. If anything is unclear or if you have any questions, feel free to write them in the comments and we'll address them together. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon so you don't miss anything. And I won't say goodbye for long. See you later, beauties.